Hey, God bless all of you as you are joining me today. Let me know where you're tuned in from. My name is Prophet Charlie Champ. I am the co-founder of Destiny Encounters International along with my wife, Bryn Champ. You can find out more about us at www.destinyencounters.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification uh, button so that you can be notified every time that we go live. God bless you, Kristen, as you are joining us from Maine. Let me know again where you guys are tuned in from. We're going to be discussing the seer anointing. And I am going to be prophesying over some people. Somebody needs to just type in right now, prophesy. Because I'm going to be prophesying and calling people out on the broadcast today. Uh, Christina, God bless you from New York City. God bless you. And if you want to share the broadcast, please share the broadcast. That would be a tremendous help. Thank you, Eric types in prophesy. Yes, we're going to be prophesying. Kristen says prophesy. We're going to be prophesying and uh, bringing the word of the Lord over you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Renita, I think, from uh, MA. I wonder if that is Massachusetts. God bless you. Uh, Courtney from Georgia. Bless you. John. Good to see you from Florida. Eric, God bless you. Guys, I want to encourage you today as we are getting started here uh, to pull, to draw your faith in on what God wants to deliver to you. I believe that God has a word for you. And the Lord wants to release His presence into your life, into your family, into your marriage, into your finances. There are areas uh, that the Lord wants to touch today. Hello from Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, God bless you. And so we want to prophesy over you. Hello, Arpana, God bless you. God bless everyone that's joining. And if you will, again, share the broadcast, we're going to be praying, prophesying, declaring the word of the Lord. Good to see Jeremy from Kansas. God bless you, Jeremy. Hallelujah. Uh, guys, I want to just take a moment and encourage you to join us October the 31st through November the 2nd for our Fire, Oil, and Glory Conference here in Moravian Falls, North Carolina. We have special guests. Uh, Bishop Mark Sharona is going to be with us. Judy Jacobs. Stevie Mitchell is going to be leading the worship. I'm going to be bringing the word of the Lord. Bryn is also going to be ministering and bringing the word of the Lord. I feel that it will be a strategic time. Um, the presence of God is going to meet us in a very powerful way on those dates, October the 31st through November the 2nd. The second is going to be an oil anointing service. It is always an outstanding time of impartation. If you've ever been to a fire, oil, and glory, you know what uh, happens on that last night. And I've seen so many ministers break through. I've seen uh, believers uh, increase in the anointing and the power of God. I, I've had so many testimonies of people that joined us uh, and after, you know, from this year, from last year to this year, God has truly transformed their life. So I want to encourage you to come and be a part of those meetings. I feel like God is going to do something supernatural, especially on that Saturday night. So you do not want to miss it. Please, you have to register. There is a few seats left, so don't procrastinate. Hear what God is saying. And if you're feeling a pulling, a tugging to come and be a part of it, 
Please do, please do. Now, we're going to be talking about the seer anointing. And we're going to be talking about the prophetic. And then I'm going to be prophesying over people. And uh, as we're getting started, again, just let me know where you're tuned in from. But the Bible tells us in Revelation 19.10, if you have your Bible, turn with me to Revelation 19. Uh, Let's look here. Verse number 10, it says, uh, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said to me, See that thou doest not this, for I am a fellow servant with you, and, uh, with you, brethren. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Somebody type in, Jesus is the prophetic. Jesus is the prophetic. This is Revelation 19.10. Jesus is the prophetic. So if we are going to move in the accuracy of the prophetic declaration, we must see Jesus and not people. I want to say that again. Revelation 19.10. And just looking at the latter part of the verse, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So Jesus is the prophetic. And if we are to deliver an accurate prophetic word, we must see Jesus and not people. If we judge and we look at people, we will miss what God is prophetically saying for them. We have to have the eyes of Jesus. When we have the eyes of Jesus, we see him, we see what God wants to do for the person, and we begin to prophesy accurately the word of the Lord. And I've always noticed, I mean, in my um, kind of understanding of the office of the prophet, I know that sometimes when we look at the analogy of the body of Christ, we sometimes say, well, they're the eye or they're the ear. But I actually believe that the prophet is the central nervous system of the body. And it conveys to the body exactly what is happening in the body of Christ. It takes an assessment of what is happening. It will give... Um, the word and what uh, kind of give a, a, uh, a scale of health. It will give a synopsis of what is taking place within the body. This is why we need prophets. We need people that are prophetically inclined in nature. And you should be connected to ministries that celebrate the prophetic. Any ministry that downplays the power of the prophetic is something that you want to be disconnected from. Because without the prophetic, you cannot see into the future. You cannot accurately know what God is doing now. And you cannot articulate properly a precise vision for where God wants to take his people. 
So we know that the apostolic is that um, anointing that allows there to be a plowing forward. But what direction are we going? And I think in some ways there's been a miscalculation of what the apostolic is. And I want to get into all of that. But ap- the apostolic is not um, someone that just has a lot of churches. That is a bishop. A bishop is an overseer of multiple churches. And the apostolic Let me take a bunny trail here for a moment. The apostolic has much more to do with signs and wonders in the power of transformation in regions. They are sent ones. So there needs to be a distinction between a pastor who has multiple churches and really is a bishop and an overseer and an apostolic anointing. There's been a a little bit of a muddling, mudding of the waters um, when it comes to the apostolic. The apostolic, according uh, to Romans 15 and what Paul described as the um, apostolic, was that there were signs and wonders that followed that particular mantling or ministry. So it isn't just that you have to, you know, well, I'm an apostle because I have this many churches. You may be a bishop, but there's a certain distinction of the apostolic that has to do with signs and wonders. Also, the um, apostolic has a... uh, has a vein of impartation that is cor- that is connected into it, as well as the office of the prophet. If you are connected with a prophet or an, ap- or an apostle, they have the ability to bring an impartation. There's an impartation that is connected with that ministry. But we, we know that prophecy, according to Revelation, 19 verse 10, that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So again, whenever we're going to prophesy accurately over someone, we need to see Jesus and not that person. If you see them, you can sometimes misjudge what God is saying because now you're looking through the natural eye Uh, instead of looking through the eyes of the Lord. And I'll give you an example of this. Uh, When, uh, and and, and even the the highest of of the, those that operate in the prophetic can miss it sometimes because even with uh, Samuel, the prophet, he judged according to the eyes when he lined up Jesse's sons. And he looked at the one son and said, surely this is the one that the Lord has chosen. And the Lord said, no, I haven't chosen him because he was looking through the eyes uh, of the natural. The one that the Lord had chosen wasn't even in the room. So let me prophesy over you. God will bring you into the room at the right time. Some of you have been feeling like you missed it or that you've been overlooked, or that um, you haven't been placed in front of the right people, or that you've, had, you've been given favor. But I just prophesy over you right now that God is going to bring you into the room at the right time. And you don't want to be uh, ahead of time. You want to be in the Kairos moment, the divine moments of God. And that's where David found himself. He found himself in the divine time of timing of God. And the Lord actually rebuked Samuel and said, I've chosen none of these sons. And that's when he, he, he began to discern that there must be another one that is not in the room. 
So don't get discouraged just because you were overlooked in a season. Recognize that God has kept you and that the oil has been preserved and there's coming an anointing upon your head. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. If you're just joining us, share the broadcast. And I feel like there's been, in a sense, as I've taken kind of a pulse of things that have happened in the last several years, there, there's been like a backing down in some ways of the really radicalness of the, of the seer anointing and the prophetic. You can't schedule prophecy. Okay, you can't, you can't somehow um, make the prophetic fit into uh, your man-made theological box. The moment that we allow a theologian to dictate how the prophetic operates when they themselves are not actually operating in the supernatural they're not actually operating in the prophetic then we have just allowed a spirit of religion to lord over the the mouth and the word of the lord and you're never going to and you're not necessarily going to fit in with those that are um, trying to make everything logical as opposed to supernatural prophets are ecstatic in nature and prophecy and the prophetic can come at any moment this is why um, I, I would just be at my house and suddenly the word of the Lord comes to me. This doesn't just happen to me in a meeting. It doesn't just happen at a gathering. Prophets prophesy all the time. Prophetic words come uh, just while you're sitting there. You know, you could be uh, reading a book or you could be like sitting outside in a chair and the, and the word of the Lord comes to you. Prophets are ecstatic. This is, and when we look at the Old Testament, there are several ways that we can see how the prophetic anointing just drops on you. I mean, the hand of the Lord would come on prophets. The spirit of the Lord came upon them. The spirit lifted me up, one prophet said. The spirit entered me is what one of the one of the phrases in the Old Testament. The spirit rested upon me. The word of the Lord came. The spirit of the Lord clothed. The Bible says that an angel came and the Lord said, I'm going to put you on like a glove to Gideon. You, 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 can't, you can't box in prophets. You have to allow them to freely flow as the spirit moves. And a, a, a prophet will get a word from the Lord even in his sleep. Dreams, visions, trances, ecstatic experiences. A prophet will see something and suddenly it sparks them. Hey, Patrick, God bless you. A spirit uh, of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord can come any moment. And so don't allow um, this, you know, religious spirit to box you in and tell you, well, you're, you, you're getting too many prophecies, you know, or you prophesy too much. I had somebody tell me, you post too many prophetic words. Too many as opposed to what? What are, we, what are we judging this by? Are we only allowed to get one or two prophecies a month? I think that prophets should be prophesying all the time. 
I think that prophets prophesy. Somebody type in prophesy. I think that if the word of the Lord is coming, that the word of the Lord should be released. I don't think it should be quenched. The the Bible tells us uh, that we should earnestly seek, desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially that we may prophesy. Paul made it a point to distinguish prophecy as something that we should earnestly and eagerly be uh, going after. We should have a desire to prophesy. And I'll tell you, when you desire to prophesy, then God will begin to fill your mouth. He'll begin to fill your mouth. And, you know, I've been doing a whole series on Wednesday nights. We just started it on the seer anointing. If you missed last week's broadcast uh, from our Wednesday night, you should watch it on our YouTube channel. It was so powerful. And I told some stories about different uh, seer anointings that I have uh, been able to be in contact with um, one of them being Bob Jones, Paul Kane. I talked about. Uh, I talked about Kenneth Hagen. Talked about William Branham, and uh, the, these men uh, were men of the word, and they were men of the spirit. And if I was to distinguish them not just as seers, I would say that they were friends of God. And ultimately, that's what we all want to be. We want to be a friend of the Lord. And it, it, it just, you know, as I've been studying this and, and spending time with the Lord, the, the Lord really brought that back up to me again about just being his friend. Psalms 25 verse 14 says, Friendship with God is reserved for those who fear him. With them alone, he shares his secrets of his promises. With, with the prophet, God shares his secrets. And to be a friend of the Lord is something so amazing and is a real blessing because, you know, um, the Lord will begin to share his secrets or his mysteries with you. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 through 19. Talks about the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. And a spirit of wisdom and revelation. When you have a spirit of wisdom. And you have a spirit of revelation. The word of the Lord opens to you. And you begin to prophesy. And what is prophesied can be found within the context of the word of God. But sometimes it will come in a package that will offend religion. So don't don't just be boxed into this thing where it's like you, you feel afraid to say anything because you're going to be judged by um, someone that is uh, of the opinion that the prophetic no longer exists. Or that prophecy can only be reserved uh, for certain spaces. I think that God wants us to prophesy in the marketplace. God will have you prophesy over your friends. God will have you prophesy uh, at your workplace. God will have you prophesy uh, to your neighbor. God will have you where when the word of the Lord comes to you. Don't worry. How man will judge it. Worry about what God will say. When you. Are. Are. Before him at the great white throne judgment. 
And I've had times in my own life where I had to make a decision whether I was going to listen to the opinions of man or if I was going to release the word of the Lord. And I fear the Lord more than I fear the opinion of man. And you should be of that same opinion. Somebody needs to share this broadcast today because we're going to be prophesying over people. And I have uh, something that I want to get to just very quickly. But I want to encourage you. Don't be moved by a man's opinion of you. Because in the, in the, the greater spectrum of eternity, you have to face the Lord. And I would have rather be obedient to the Lord and what he told me to say than man's opinion of what they think that I should be allowed to release. And there's been a number of prophecies that I've had to stand and just watch them come to fruition. One of them being the word, about um, Joe Biden and his feet being clay and him not rising to a second term, which we've seen now he, he, he fell in front of the whole world. We watched that prophecy play out. And, and I, you know, I had people saying, you know, just pray for him. And that was the, the Lord didn't have me to pray for him. The Lord said, release the word of the Lord. And we've been faithful to release that word. When the word came about the hunter becoming the hunted, that was posted on uh, our our, uh, prophet's loft years before the headline. And the New York Post said the hunter became the hunted. 2017, the word of the Lord came to me about Kamala Harris. We're watching that play out right now. The word of the Lord came to me and said that Donald Trump will have two terms. Well, all these things have been documented. But we need prophets that do not fear man's opinion, but will speak the word of the Lord Because they fear the Lord more than they fear the opinions of other preachers. And they they fear the Lord more than a, a moment in time where they are uh, considered to be false. Because time is always going to vindicate the prophet. Time is always going to vindicate the prophet. Oh, I feel the anointing. Somebody needs to type in preach right now. We're getting ready to prophesy over people. But I want to encourage you, go back and listen to uh, that, uh, that teaching that I did on Wednesday. It's on our YouTube channel. It's called The Cedar Anointing. We're doing a whole series on it. Something came that, um, that night spontaneously. The word of the Lord came. And this is what the word of the Lord said. And you can go back and listen to it. But the Lord said, my people will move through windows in time. The Lord said, my people will move through windows in time. And he gave me the scripture out of Isaiah 60, verse 8. It says, who are these who fly like clouds, like doves to their windows? And there is a people that are being released in the earth. You can call them a dove company. You can call them the bridal company. You can call them... um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the sent ones, you, you can call them 
um, cloud walkers. These are people that are led by the Spirit. We're coming into a, a time where we're going to see the full manifestation of what it looks like for sons to be led by the Spirit. And the Lord told me, He said, my people will move through windows in time. In other words, there will be an open heaven during periods of time, and they will move through those windows. There will be times, listen to me, there will be times in the days ahead when people will, are not able to move freely around the earth. But then there will be windows in time open for believers to do exploits for the Lord. Again, the Lord said, we will see a full measure of the anointing of sons that are led by the Spirit in these days. There, the Lord clearly showed me that there are going to be times where the Lord will say, don't go anywhere, don't do anything, don't move. And then suddenly, like a window of chronological time will open for uh, exploits. And that will be the moment that you want to move and do what the Lord is calling you to do. And then that window of time, that window will close and it will seem as if uh, you're stationary. And then another window will open for uh, you to do what God is calling you to do in that moment. And there are two kinds of missions I'm prophesying and I'm giving a, a, an overall word to the body right now. Because you're going to want to be very careful where you go in the days ahead. The day of just doing and going and not really inquiring of the Lord on where you're going and what you're doing, those days are over. In order for you to have the canopy of protection of Psalm 91 over you and your family, you're going to need to inquire of the Lord. And it wouldn't, and, and, and when you get the green light of God, then it's like it won't matter where you go. It could be the most dangerous place on the planet, but because you have the, like, the go-ahead of God, the canopy of, uh, of the overshadowing of the wing of God's protection of Psalm 91 is going to be with you and you will be protected. Now, I've got to move through this quickly. And if you are in the Moravian Falls area or you're in, this, uh, our, in our region, I would encourage you to come on Wednesday night because I'm going to be diving more into this. But there are two kinds of missions. The first one that the Lord revealed to me is, is found in Acts 9. Acts 9. And if you're just joining us, don't go anywhere because I'm going to start prophesying over people here in a few minutes. Uh, but I want to deliver this um, word to you. Acts 9, um, verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named uh, Ananias. And to him said, uh, said, the Lord, uh, said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, behold, I am here. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go to the street which is called Straight, inquire of the house of Judas, the, for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. 
and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. So one of the things that the Lord is going to begin to do for many, there is going to be a strategic assignment for certain individuals that the Lord will reveal to you either in a dream or in a vision to go and minister to them. These will be individuals that God has already visited like what happened in Acts 9. But the Lord will send you and give you the places where he wants you to go. And you will find them by name, by address, by a visionary experience where you have seen them, their face. The Lord had spoken to you about them. The Lord will say, go to this place. And you'll begin to minister to them. And they are ones that um, will come out of great uh, darkness. It took a lot for Ananias to go and minister to Paul because Paul was known as someone that was killing Christians. I'm telling you that there are going to be some that will shock many in the religious community that are going to be used by God and are going to be saved. Some that are in deep, gross darkness are about to have a visitation. And God will send you and send some in the coming days, to minister to them one-on-one. -on -one. And this will be greater than preaching to masses because these individuals have platforms that are able to reach the masses. And you might, it might, even, do, might even do this in secret. Because remember, God reveals his secrets uh, to his friends. Remember what I said, Psalm 25, verse 14, friendship it, with God is reserved for those who fear him. With them alone, he shares his secrets of his promises. There are some, some that are going to secretly go beyond, behind enemy lines and lead some that are in gross darkness to the Lord. And we'll see them. And, and, and some won't even believe it. Some will say, this has to be fake. This person is so, was so demonically possessed. This person was so in the kingdom of darkness. This must be a joke. There's no way that they... Have, have become born again. And I see uh, those that are te were terrorists, those that were uh, terroristic coming to the Lord and having visitations from God. And some that are anointed will be able to locate them through an encounter from God and they're going to, like 
Ananias see them baptized in the Spirit. I was told a story about William Branham where William Branham was um, supposed to do this big campaign. There was uh, around 20,000 people that were going to be in attendance. And he told Gordon Lindsay, he said, if the Lord willing, I will be there with you. And... Gordon Lindsay said to him, well, we have 20,000 people waiting. He said, well, if the Lord leads me to be with you, then I'll be there. So Brother Branham gets to the airport, and when he gets to the airport, the word of the Lord comes to him. And instead of getting on the plane to go to where the 20,000 people are at, the Lord says, get on this other plane and go to Memphis. So he changes his ticket, and the Lord... Um, uh, sends him down into a certain area of Memphis to where this um, lady is sitting on a fence line. And she says to uh, Branham's walking, and he stops at the house that he had seen in a vision. And she says, I've been waiting on you, prophet. And he says, where's the boy at? And she said, he's in the house, but he's dying. He said, the Lord sent me here to pray for him. He walks into the house, prays for this boy that was dying that he had seen in a vision, that the mother had prayed and seen William Branham come, coming in a vision to pray for her son. That's why she was sitting on this fence post or uh, on this uh, fence in her front yard. She, she had enough faith to wait for him. And the Lord had told her that William Branham was going to show up. Imagine that. And during this time, there wasn't a bigger ministry in the United States of William Branham. He was the premier ministry of the supernatural during this time. But he heard the word of the Lord and instead of going and ministering at the big uh, you know, 20,000 uh, auditorium, he heard the word of the Lord and he went down and he prayed for this young boy that was dying and he was instantly healed. He picked up his bag, put his hat back on, walked out of the house, went right back to the airport, flew back home to his wife. Never even went to the, 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 the large campaign because the Lord had called him to this particular woman's house to pray for that young man. This is something we also need to recognize about the prophet's anointing. They're not moved by crowds. They are moved by the word of the Lord. Their ministry is to minister to firstly the Lord and secondly to be led by his voice. And I've said it before that a man uh, is not supernatural just because he prays. A man is not supernatural just because he reads the Bible. A man is supernatural because after he has read the word and after he has prayed, he follows the instruction of the Lord. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. You can sacrifice hours reading books. You can sacrifice hours uh, reading theology. You can sacrifice hours reading your Bible, sacrifice hours praying. But uh, obedience is greater than sacrifice. What happens after you've prayed, what happens after you read is what truly matters. A man that is supernatural will ultimately do what he has been instructed to do by the word of the Lord. Whether it's to reach the masses or to reach the one, he is obedient to the son. He's not moved by uh, what others have to say about him. He's not moved by finances. He's not moved by 
uh, well, if you preach over here, the offering is going to be better. If you are led that way, you are a charlatan. You are not truly called by God. If 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 you are are someone that is a preacher and you are constantly led by where you're going to receive the biggest offering it, that that's how you do that's how you decide where you're going you are a charlatan you are a grifter you are not sent by god a prophet a man of god a preacher should never be led by crowds or by paychecks. They should be led by the word of the Lord and where God is calling them to go. Because when God calls you to go somewhere, the fruit will remain and it will stand the test of time. There are meetings that have come and gone and people have already forgotten about them. But when you do what God has called you to do, there is a book of remembrance in heaven written about your assignment. And when you get to heaven, God will reward you upon your obedience to listening to his voice. And we desperately need to hear the voice of the Lord in this season. So there's two kinds of missions. There's the Acts 9 mission, and then there is the Acts 16 Turn with me quickly. I, I'm getting ready to prophesy over people. But if you are enjoying this teaching, just type in preach right now. Someone needs to hear this because you cannot be led by what you see on social media. You cannot be led by what uh, is happening in the who's who in the charismatic zoo. This is about being face to face with the Lord. Not about having your face on a big billboard. Acts uh, 16 verse 9 and 10 says, In a vision appeared Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, Come over unto Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go to Macedonia, assuringly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. So there is the call that's coming for individuals to see individuals saved. Then there is the Macedonia call that comes in a vision that where whole cities are going to be saved. And I'm telling you by the word of the Lord that there are, there are preachers, and you need to hear this. I'm bringing you the word of the Lord right now. You should take your schedule for 2025 and rip it up. And get on your face before the Lord and say, God, where are you calling me to go? And for those that are going to do that, that aren't going to block out their whole schedule and, you know, I'm going to be here with, with all, you know, this conference and that conference and this conference. And that, but really here where God is calling you to go, like the Macedonian call, the Lord is about to visit you. And we're going to see this happen in the coming days. Where the Lord is going to visit some and say, go over here. You'll see in a vision this particular city. Well, I don't really have very many connections in that city. One pastor with 120 people. But you'll be obedient to go there and it will break out in revival. It will break out in extended meetings. You'll go a couple, you'll go for a couple of days and notable miracles will happen. And you'll say, I have to extend. 
We'll go in a couple more days and a couple more days. Suddenly you'll be there for a whole month and the city will be coming to the Lord. I'm just delivering to you some things that the Lord's been speaking to me about that are coming into next year. These windows of time where God will deposit a vision to see individuals saved, but then there will be uh, an anointing to go into cities. And the church may not even be that large. It may only be, you know, maybe 200 people. But the, but the presence is so strong there because you went there by vision. You went there by direction of God. And there were notable signs and wonders and miracles that happened. And it breaks out and the mayor is getting born again. The, the power of God is enveloping the city. And the Lord told me... On Wednesday night, it came spontaneously that some of the major cities in the U.S. will become so unsafe that people in America will flee to the country and they will find sanctuary in these smaller towns. In these larger cities that have been deemed sanctuary cities by the government will be so unsafe that they, that um, in order for uh, families to find safety, they will leave the major city areas and they will go to even smaller towns. And the Lord said to me that, that there will be revival outpourings that will break out in places that will shock many. They'll be like Bethlehem's. Everyone thought, thinks that you know, Jerusalem was, was where the, where, you know, the, the uh, glory is going to break out. But when you study out the scripture, you see that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. There are things that are going to be birthed in smaller towns that are going to be glorious. And we need to get ready for it. Now, I want to pray for some today. If you're watching me on Facebook, you're watching me on YouTube, wherever you're watching me, I want to begin to pray for you. I hope that you receive that word and I would encourage you to begin to pray into um, this year. We already know what's going to happen in the, uh, in the U.S. election. So put your mind at ease for that. But remember that the Lord had given me a word about five years And, but God said that those that were obedient would be put into Goshen. So that five years does not end um, November the 4th. It, spring, it goes into 2025. And I, I've told um, many, many, many people um, that we know what's going to happen because it's already been prophesied. But it doesn't end. It goes in, it, go, it continues. And we need to keep praying. And I pray that those that follow the ministry um, would see the proven track record of prophecies that have come forth from this particular ministry I can't speak for everybody else. I don't take a gauge on what everybody else is saying. I hear what the Lord is saying, and um, I release what God says uh, 
through my time with him. I'm accountable for what he says to me. I'm not accountable for this person or that person or they said this or that. I don't even look at that stuff, to be honest with you. I just stay in my lane and I do what God says. So I want to pray for some people. Melissa, you have to go back and look at it. It's on the prophet's loft if you're wondering what the five-year prophecy is about. It was starting in 2021. It was about certain things that happened that I can't say because of this platform. Uh, it's all there on our prophet's loft, destinyencounters.com. And many of you should go back through those prophecies, those prophetic words. You should go back through all of them. We, we are in a time where it's like, what is God saying right now? Well, what God's saying right now has already been said five years ago. It's the same with the Kamala Harris word in 2017. And people thought when I prophesied that in, in 17 and then what happened in 2020, they were like, well, you missed it because this didn't happen. And here we are now. John says he posted that five-year prophecy in 2021. Yes. And, and those that follow the ministry closely know what's been said. So let's pray right now because I want to prophesy over some. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for all those that are neat the sound of my voice. Let the anointing begin to flow. Let your glory begin to saturate every person underneath the sound of my voice. God, I thank you for provision. I thank you for protection. I thank you for your presence in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. So Crystal, I just saw a Crystal on here. God bless you, Crystal. I, I just want to prophesy over you creative breakthrough. And I saw like the crystal sea in heaven. And I saw that there have been some things um, that you've traded on the sea of glass, that crystal sea. So Father, I thank you uh, for crystal. And I saw like a creative breakthrough. And there is a creative gifting that has been dormant in you but God is about to open up unexpected avenues of increase and blessing for you in your finances. And I feel like, Crystal, that there has been um, uh, some things that you've, you've uh, had the opportunity to even invest in, but as, instead of investing in like, like uh, different endeavors, you invested in the kingdom. And God says that this is a time where you're going to begin uh, to see breakthrough in the name of Jesus. But when I saw it, I saw creative breakthrough. And there's some ideas that you put on the shelf. But God says that it's time to bring out those creative ideas that have been dormant. And today is a day where he's reactivating those ideas. There re, there's a reactivation of those ideas. And the Lord says that he is igniting creativity in you. And new ideas are about to flow freely. There's been some, some that you've even received in a dream, but you haven't been able to do them uh, even because of your financial status. But the Lord wants me to tell you that because of your giving, it is about to open up for you an avenue of blessing 
so that you can begin to implement these creative ideas that have been dormanted. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for Crystal. I don't know you, Crystal, but I just pray right now for those dormanted, those dormant ideas to be, uh, I hear the Lord saying, uh, those dormant idea, ideas are going to be uh, developed in a greater way. And I, I see like, um, I see like uh, heavenly blueprints being given to you and more uh, ideas being downloaded in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I just thank you for Crystal right now. Amen. Amen. So, Crystal, I hope that makes sense for you. If it does, just type in right now. Just say, uh, yes, Brother Charlie, that makes sense for me. I also saw a mother, um, um, a mother who has, uh, you have three children, but your husband left. Good to see Robin Hubbard on here. God bless you, Robin. I saw a, a mother with three children who your husband recently left you, like within the last year or so. Um, and the Lord says that I am your provider. I am your provider. I am your provider. And the Lord is strengthening your faith. Crystal says that does make sense. Well, God bless you, Crystal. Crystal. The Lord says for this woman you, with three children, your husband, I saw in the last year to year and a half, left you and you were devastated. But the Lord says that he is strengthening your faith and he is bringing New beginnings. Your faith was tested, but you are being strengthened. And there has been a, a season of deepening in your trust with the Lord. But I saw the Spirit of God bringing a great resilience and restitution for the trauma that you have faced. And so, Father, I pray right now for that mother, that woman. In the name of Jesus. Saw like three children. And your faith has really been tested. If you're on uh, right now, just say, that's me, so that I can pray for you. And we can connect right now on this broadcast. Hallelujah. But I saw your strength, a strengthening of your faith. And a fortification of your family and restitution being given. Thank you, Jesus. And I feel like uh, just as I'm talking right now, I keep um, I keep seeing the letter L. I feel like your name starts with it with an L, like a I don't know if 
It's, it's like it starts with an L. So, Father, I just thank you right now. I just thank you right now for this woman. I just, I just bless her in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Guys, if you want to share the broadcast, go ahead and share the broadcast. I'm prophesying right now um, over different individuals. I don't, if John George is still on here, I want to prophesy over John George. He's a pastor, a, a preacher from Florida. If you're still on here, um, just type in, I'm here. Okay, just saw John. John, I prophesy over you. Uh, supernatural acceleration in your ministry. God is about to expand your influence in your region. And I saw in the realm of the Spirit that you're going to begin to reach new hearts. And where it seemed like you've been spinning your wheels, the Lord says that the uh, efforts that he is going to lead you into the endeavors. It's like you've been doing a lot of effort, but the Lord says, I'm taking you from your effort into new adventures and endeavors that are going to lead you to significant impact. Significant impact. And I see the word dunamis which is where we get the uh, English word in the New Testament for power. But I see a transition for you. And I see like God putting dunamis on your ministry. And you're going from your, your, like your effort to... Uh, seeing these encounters in your endeavor in, in endeavors and the Lord is about to bring you into some significant significant encounters for for significant impact. So, Father, I just thank you right now. And I sense like this is in your area, like God is going to give you a greater ex expanse of influence. But I also see like uh, the Lord, I, I feel like you're getting ready to go somewhere. Like there's a door of opportunity for you to go, I'm seeing like the like uh, the the continent of Africa, and the and uh, I see that God has opened this door. If this makes sense, just type in yes. I'm seeing like the continent of Africa, but I'm seeing this great impact, and I'm seeing like uh, the like you flying on a plane, but it's like you're dropping uh, the power. The power is being released. There's like a significant impact that uh, God is going to use you. So, Lord, I just thank you right now for John. I thank you. I see you flying. And um, it's like, you know, how the, 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 the like the, 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 the uh, military jets fly over nations. John says this makes sense. And I see like the Lord is about to drop you somewhere, but it's about to be a dunamis, like the explosion of the supernatural. And 
it's going to be a significant impact. Now, the Lord is going to grow your influence in the area that you're at, you're in, uh, but it is also um, an expanse of your influence to, and your voice to reach new hearts and to be effective in bringing a significant impact into other areas. So get ready for that, John, because God is going to do it, um, and it will be without your effort. It will be by God's, uh, by God's direction, and you're going to jump into, uh, well, I should say jump out of this, like, it's like, I see it's a military plane, like God send you on a mission. Um, and I saw the continent of Africa. So be ready for that because it is coming. It is coming. It is coming. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. For, somebody say, just type in prophesy right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mitch Lamb, I just saw uh, the name Mitch Lamb. And I saw that, Mitch, you're coming into a season of adventure, says the Lord. Just as you were saying that about uh, just encouraging John in what he was receiving, I saw your name. And I heard a season of adventure. You're entering into a season of adventure where God will challenge you to explore new places and embrace the journey that your heart has already been pulling you towards. There's some things that you've been afraid about stepping out and doing. But the Lord says uh, that he is bringing you into a season of adventure. A season of adventure. And this is uh, to explore new places. And I sense that this is like um, also spiritually, you feel a little bit boxed in, like, uh, like you haven't been able to grow spiritually. But the Lord says that, that you're going to explore new places. He says, yes, 100%. Awesome. So, Lord, I just thank you right now. Hallelujah. For a season of adventure. A season of adventure. A season of adventure. And, I, and even as I'm, say, I'm, I'm saying season, I feel like the Lord uh, is giving you where the Bible says the salt of the earth, the Lord says you're the salt of the earth. And he's, he's like releasing a, a season of adventure for you to go to new places so that you'll be the salt in the earth. I sense that this is for um, your spiritual like growth, but it's also uh, that God is going to take you new places, Mitch, and the Lord calls you the salt of the earth. And the Lord wants you to uh, be used. He has anointed you to bring uh, His season into people's season. Like his, like the Lord's flavoring into people's season in their life. So, Father, I just thank you right now 
for Mitch in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Is there also, I saw a visitation for a family. Uh, you live in like, a, like something like Ridge. It's like a subdivision. Like a ridge, like, a, like an oak ridge. Like an oak ridge. This is like, I don't know if this is like a, like it's Oak Ridge Street or it's, this is like a subdivision. That someone you're watching me, you live on something about Oak Ridge. Hey, Garrett, good to see you on here. Uh, you're, you're like, you're, your home is connected to um, an Oak Ridge. Thank you, Lord. Vivian says, "Amen." I, 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 um, I'm, I'm seeing this Oak Ridge. Thank you, Lord. Okay, wow. Mitchell Lamb says, who I just prophesied over, he said, I visited my niece in Jacksonville during the evacuation who lives in Oak Ridge. Well, I, I saw that there was a visitation. And this is powerful because it's connected uh, with you, Mitch. And I, 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 I saw like this visitation of the Lord coming into that house. He says, this word is a great encouragement. This is powerful. And Mitch, you need to call her. I know that you were just with her. Um. But I saw the Lord visiting this family. Did you pro were you prophesying in their home? Did you like when you were with them? Were you did you pray over this family? Did you like uh, um, because I saw the visitation of the Lord? It was like. Um, a canopy over this family. And there have been some like trouble, there have been some things like um, like shaky, but the Lord says it's like uh, uh, the, this, this, this home is like an, uh, like an ark. It's like, you know, their home is an ark. And the Lord says, I'm visiting. I'm visiting this family. Yes, I prayed over the knees, son, AJ. Yes, when I prayed. Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to read the comment. Yes, when I prayed over the niece, son AJ, I anointed their house before the hurricane. Guys, are you hearing this right now? So, Lord, I just thank you for this family. Because you, 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 I saw you, uh, Mitch, as like the salt of the earth and, and the Lord using you. My goodness. I feel the anointing right now. The Lord is going to use you and send you on uh, these adventures. God definitely showed up in their house. Well, I was seeing it. 
Because as I was done prophesying over you, I saw the, uh, this Oak Ridge subdivision. And I was like, why am I seeing this? And now I totally understand. And this is a confirmation of what God has called you to do, to continue to do, even as this word of the Lord came forth today about going to individuals, like being led by, by, by the Lord, uh, like Ananias, and going into, into these different places where the Lord is leading us and seeing salvation and seeing household salvation, even like uh, Peter when he's on the rooftop and the Lord said, go to this specific house. And, and, I, and I see gatherings in this home. Now you have to hear me on this. I see another gathering happening in this house and I see visitation like a house meeting where people that are in that neighborhood and in that area are going to be saved. And I want to encourage you to reach back out to them and say, I, I, I received a prophetic word where, where uh, there was very detailed information uh, given about myself, but also about your home. And, and just tell them um, that there is a, uh, a salvation that's coming to this home, but also there's something about house meetings. There's something about gathering in the home that the Lord says that he's going to begin to pour out his power and miracles are going to begin to manifest right inside the house. And I saw it like an ark, um, an, AR, an ARK, but also an ARC, an ark of power. And there's going to be powerful uh, manifestations of the presence. I see uh, people just worshiping the Lord on the carpet in this home. I see the Spirit of God moving. So, Father, I bless it now in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Guys, if you would share the broadcast, um, there is an accuracy in the spirit on the broadcast right now. The power of prophecy is here. Lord, thank you for the prophetic word coming forth. Thank you, Lord. Somebody needs to type in prophesy. I will be back there during Thanksgiving holidays. You need to set aside one day and, 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 uh, and allow um, people to come and experience the Lord. And the testimonies are going to be incredible. The, the, so... Um, so awesome. Lord, thank you for that word. Thank you for that word. God, thank you for the spirit of prophecy flowing on this broadcast. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit manifesting in the name of Jesus. Somebody type in prophesy right now. Prophesy right now. Uh, Laura, I see Laura on here. Laura, uh, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that there are un, listen to me, there are unfinished dreams that the Lord is about to revive. I'm going to say it again. This is for Laura. I saw as your name came up, I saw unfinished dreams being revived and the Lord says that the valley of dry bones is about to receive the breath of God. And I don't know if you've been having an issue um, in your bones Like there's something about like pain in the bones, but I think this is also spiritually. This is first like it's first like, uh, Laura, um, your last name starts with the B. 
um, I sense that in the spirit, there has been a bit of a dryness. But, she says, thank you, Lord. But also in the natural, there's been something about the bones. But the Lord says that there's healing. There's healing. There's healing. And it's like the Lord says that he's breathing upon you. And there are dreams that you have set aside that have been unfulfilled, but the Lord says that he's reviving them. And God is breathing new life into you. And there is a renewal of your passion. It's not that you haven't been passionate. It isn't that you haven't been passionate. But the Lord says that he is, he is breathing a refreshing upon your bones. And there is a passion that is going to begin to emanate out of you. So Lord, I just thank you right now. I thank you for the anointing. And I thank you right now for that which has been unfinished, unfulfilled. That these dreams will be revived now in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for that right now, Holy Ghost. Come on, come on. I feel like prophesying. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Thank you, Lord, for that restoration. God bless you, Tim. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, Courtney. Let me know where you guys are tuned in from if you're joining me. Hey, Stephanie, God bless you. Donna says, Donna Reynolds says, prophesy, Brother Charlie. That's what we are doing right now. Praise God. Let me know where you're watching from. God bless you, Karen. Anna says, prophesy. Hallelujah. What an amazing word that came forth about Mitch. That was just like the like the the splitting. And I saw that Oak Ridge. I was like, what is that? And then it was like connected right into that prophecy. See, when you're dealing with the prophetic, you you see in part, you know in part, but then you just what you have to do is you need to prophesy. Your part, like God will give you the part and you prophesy it. And as you prophesy it, it opens more. Hey, Robin from Moravian Falls. Guys, I got to tell you something. The presence of God has been so intense and increasing and incredible in Moravian Falls. The angelic activity has been going to a new level. I mean, visitations, dreams. It's like amazing. And it's always been amazing up here, but really something is opening like I haven't felt uh, before since I've moved here. And um, the Lord is really doing some, uh, some deep, deep things. I've been spending more time in the spirit of the Lord, is the presence of the Lord, just praying and really uh, just cultivating it. Our Wednesday night services have been really uh, thick with the presence of God. Uh, last Wednesday, it felt like just the cloud of God's presence was resting over us. Robin says, yes, indeed. I, it just feel like a whole area is just being saturated 
saturated. Um, and and uh, it's, been, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. And it's like every night, angels are moving. And let me encourage you with something. Like, uh, if, you, if you have um, a night or, or a time where you're spending with the Lord and suddenly you see like a streak of light go fall in the room and you're like, what was that? That was an angel. You need to like look like a turn aside and see the same way that Moses turned aside and looked at the burning bush. When you do that, it will open up for you. A lot of times there are watcher angels, they're watching, they're looking in on us. And if you would just turn and, and like, um, and begin to uh, engage with what you just witnessed, instead of just saying, saying, just passing it by like it's nothing, it will open up for you. Slow down so that he can accelerate you. Robin says, stir the well. Uh, yeah, I feel like w- there's fresh oil that the Lord is pumping out in this area. And the lampstand, the Moravian lampstand is being lit. Is being lit. And so we've been positioning ourselves for like visitation. You know, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 says, um, let me read it to you real quick. I'm going to keep prophesying over people. So you may want to share the broadcast because something will come forth and God will start to speak. But um, 1 Samuel 3, 1 says, And the child Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word was precious in those days, for there was no open vision. There was no open vision. And I feel like we've been in a season where the word of the Lord has been very precious. And the reason that it's been precious is because uh, in some ways, and hear me in this, because I want you to hear it very clearly what I'm saying. Not everybody. But there has been a uh, real... um, Like uh, how do I say this? I, I don't want to like. I know it's going to offend people, anyways. But I, I. But here's the thing. Is that we have taken prophecy and the prophetic and. There's been a time where uh, we treated the things of the Spirit and judged them inaccurately and put them uh, aside and said like, uh, and allowed a spirit of religion to control the prophetic flow, and we've, and we've even judged things that were holy and supernatural and called them demonic. And as a result of doing that, it has, in a sense, closed uh, some, 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 some uh, encounters. We've allowed the flesh to rule over the prophetic. And, and so there, there's been some, we've allowed Eli, who is blind, to tell us what we're allowed to see. But there is a Samuel anointing that God is releasing that is ministering to the Lord.
And although it's, it's like the word of the Lord is precious, yeah, it's precious to those that are holding it dearly. And don't, don't, don't despise prophecy. Because what has happened is because we've despised the prophetic, because we've despised and we've inaccurately judged prophets and the prophetic, there is, in, a, in, a, in some ways, it's been, uh, the door has been closed to the deeper things of God, the deeper realms. But God is reigniting the lampstand. And he's looking for those like Samuel that are going to stay. Listen to me, that are going to stay uh, and minister to the Lord. So, Father, we just thank you right now. We're going to be those. Say that. Just type in. Type, type, type in, that's me, as a point of contact. We are going to be those that are going to stay true to the word of the Lord. We don't care what people think. We believe in angelic visitations. We believe in cloud of witnesses. We believe in heavenly encounters. We believe in third heaven in open heaven experiences. We believe in dreams and visions. We believe in prophecy. We believe in the word of the Lord. We believe in an in, 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 in ecstatic, ecstasis, trance-like encounters in the spirit. We count them precious. And we say, Lord, if nobody else wants it, if nobody else wants the word of the Lord, if nobody else wants the visitation from the Spirit, if nobody else wants the power of your glory, if no one else wants to be whether like Paul, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, but one was caught up into the third heaven. Lord, I want to be one of them. I don't, I, I, I don't care what people think. See, for the most part, we've been afraid of what people think about us. We don't talk about talking to angels. We don't speak about face-to-face -face encounters with Jesus. We don't talk about encounters with the cloud of witnesses. Because for some preachers, we're afraid of being labeled something. Let them label you. Who cares? I want to be one that gets caught up. I want to be one that, see, that sees what God is saying. I don't want to just know what the future is that's coming in the earth. Lord, I want to know what heaven is doing now. What is happening and going on in heaven? What is going on in the throne? What specific things are happening? We know they're worshiping, of course, because we can look at the book of Revelation. But what songs are they singing right now around the throne that have never been sung on the earth? And I want to pray, as we're closing the broadcast today, for musicians and those that are singers that are prophetic songbirds. If that's you, I want you to type in, that's me, as a point of contact right now. Because I just saw this as I was uh, speaking. That there are new songs and new sounds that are happening in, around the throne that have not been played in the earth. But musicians are, be, are, are, are trying to be so professional that they're missing the power of the throne room worship. Melissa says, that's me.
For some worship leaders, they're so wanting to, you know, get on the top whatever charts of the song and, and, and this and that. And it's like there are songs that have not been sung that are happening right now spontaneously in heaven. That if you heard that song, it would cause a transformation to take place in the earth. But we're too busy, you know, trying to capture uh, a particular flow that we feel will uh, translate uh, to the C, the CMAs or something. And it's like, or, or get us a Grammy. Who cares about that? Is your music transforming the atmosphere that you are leading it in? Because there's, a prophet, there's prophetic songs that are being sung all the time around the throne. And I want to pray for you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that they would capture that sound from the song of the Lord, and they would reject secular professionalism, that they would go off of the song sheet on the earth, and they would get into the heavenly realm where the presence of God is is releasing the word of the Lord through the song of the Lord that can transform the earth in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, you guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the broadcast. You're watching on YouTube. Please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. You can get that. Um, you can get the, uh, you know, the latest broadcasts that we do. Also, you guys, if you would prayerfully consider partnering with Destiny Encounters, there is a link in the description box of the video. We need your help. We need your, um, your partnership. We are believing God for this upcoming crusade in Honduras to be fully paid. If you were blessed by the broadcast today, you heard the word of the Lord. You say, Brother Charlie, this spoke to me. Uh, please uh, click on that link and give. Don't procrastinate. Say, I'm going to sow today. Maybe you want to become a partner of the ministry. You say, I'm going to sow. I'm going to give monthly. You might have your own ministry and say, I love this ministry. I want to connect with Destiny Encounters, I want to give to, uh, you know, through my ministry, you can do that as well. But hear the word of the Lord. Say, uh, see what the Lord would have you give. And so a seed today, help us to continue to win souls in the earth and uh, populate heaven and plunder hell. Amen. We just uh, have... Um, a few weeks and we have to get those those finances in for the upcoming crusade in Honduras. So if you want to, hey, uh, Bernadette, got, good to see Pastor Bernadette Hudson on here. God bless you. Good to see you on here. Uh, guys, if you would, click on the link. Sow a seed today. Allow the Lord to use you. Say, I'm going to sow today. I'm going to sow. I'm going to give. Maybe it's a one-time gift. Maybe you want to give a monthly. Sign up to become a partner. Do something with the finances that are in your hand so that God can multiply it. I believe there's a great transference of wealth, that the wealth of the wicked is being laid up for the just. 
but what are we doing with the finances that we are, we are being able to steward for God now? If you're spending more money at Starbucks than you are uh, in, in giving, guys, you need to reassess. Relook at your giving and say, you know what? I gave this much to Starbucks, you know, this month, and it outgave what I give to ministries. Take that money that you're you're so you're giving to Starbucks for your coffee, and say, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna stop doing that, and I'm gonna sow a seed and see what God will do with with my finances this month as opposed to last month and say, I'm going to take all that money and I'm going to sow it into souls and watch God work. Watch God begin to open doors for you. Watch God begin to do supernatural things in your marriage, in your family, with your children. Watch as words that have been dormant just become come alive and you, you begin to prophesy, uh, prophecies that have that have been not moving and nothing's been happening and suddenly you sow to seed and boom it just it just exploded for you and i decree and declare every person that sows today father i thank you for supernatural increase glory economics financial blessing Every barrier in their finances is broken. And Father, I thank you for the power of the Spirit touching their finances. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, you guys, you are amazing. Again, share the broadcast and uh, we will see you next time. And remember, Jesus is King. God bless you. Bye-bye.